Hi, this is the second in my episode on little known facts about MIMO. Um, but in order to understand those, you first need to understand how MIMO works. The previous episode, we discussed how this MIMO box works. Now, I had some questions from people saying, where the hell is this MIMO box? A MIMO box is built into every router. So any router like this, whatever you find into your phone, you've got this box. It's part of the um, 4G and 5G standards. Some will be 4x4, initially it was 2x2. Um, so it's in there. It's not something additional. And the MIMO box and the MIMO box on the base station, right when they start, they negotiate with each other as to how to change the phases to radio 1, 2, 3, 4 to achieve the most channels they can manage in a specific environment. Okay, so these things here adjust phase of each of the antennas and I'm just going to consider radio 1. And now I want to show you what happens when you've got phase changes and it's dynamic. Every millisecond it can do a different phase. So it checks, corrects, checks, corrects as you're driving or as you're walking with your phone. Now let's just look at an example of those four antennas. Say they are sort of roughly omni and they space some distance apart. So this is now, let's call them antenna one, antenna two, antenna three, antenna four. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Now, normally speaking, each of these will have an omnidirectional pattern, for example. Now, what happens? The magic of arrays are that if you connect each of, if you connect them, and this has been done for years and years and years, if you connect them with the same length of cable in phase, in other words, all of these are zero, you create a beam that looks like this, that points forward, okay? On the other hand, if you connect them with, say, a progressive phase, that 0, 30 degrees, 60, 90, you can create a beam with the same antennas, just connected with different phases, you can create a beam that points that way. You can connect them 0, minus 30, minus 60, minus 90, and you can get a beam pointing that way. So in other words, this magic box, and remember it's got those same phase changes to each of these radios, can actually give radio 1 this beam, radio 2 can give this, radio 2, and radio 3, and radio 4 perhaps. We can't find another beam that's useful for it. Bad luck, uh, you're not going to get 4x4 four four MIMO. Um, now on the other side, we've got a similar situation. Base station will also have, hopefully, spaced antennas. Um, it's got its own MIMO box. And they negotiate, okay? And say we're lucky, okay? And here somewhere is a, a building. And here is a little hill, okay? Now, radio 2 will have a path, again, on, on a certain frequency, and I want to send more than one stream of data. Radio 1, when they negotiate, they discover that here's a bounce off, and this guy will steer its beam. And now radio 1 will have on the same frequency, a set of data, the full set of data that you can get on a single beam will now be doubled up. It's a magic multiplier. And this heel also reflects a little bit. And we can get three paths here. And sometimes that's the best you can do. You can't get much more than three paths, but it was possible that there's something here, for example. And believe it or not, this array can also create a beam. So let's say, it can create a beam in this direction and let me not draw it like that, people will criticize me. It's a building that will still reflect a beam here. So that could be radio 4. So in this situation, because there happen to be nice reflect reflectors around, it can create four beams and you'll get close to four times the data rate. But make no mistake, these beams are not so nice, they overlap. So this guy's going to see a bit of this guy, this guy's going to see a bit of this guy, depending how close they are. Okay, and that does reduce it. So sometimes, even with four radios working at their best, and that's how this box it will do it. And as you move, it may have to change it, it will change it. Okay, so it will magically create four beams. If there's four reflections, you get four what's known as decorrelated paths or partially decorrelated paths, and bang, with the 300 megabits per second modem, you'll be able to get three times four, it's 1.2 gigabits. That is the magic if, if everything is right. Okay, uh, vertically, this is horizontally. If you had them vertically oriented, you can't steer left and right. So if you now look at a sideways picture, like you're on a 
on the mast, sometimes on a yacht, with four vertical antennas. We've got some antennas at four verticals into a single radome because it's very difficult to get horizontal vertical if you're in a radome. Now, here they're also connected to our magic Mimo box because there's four outputs coming here. And what can happen here is that this guy can steer the beam upwards, not always useful unless there's an aircraft um, reflecting it from that side. It can steer the beam downwards, okay? Which is why I say if you haven't got things to your side, and if you're on a sea, it's unlikely you're going to have a ship sitting next to you. And if you're very close to the base station that's say, sitting on a little hill here, you can have one beam going to that base station and if the sea is here, there's a reflection and you can get 2 by 2 MIMA. I doubt if you're ever going to get much more than 2 by 2 MIMA, even with a 4 by 4 MIMA. But that doesn't mean you don't have to use it. This is what I'm going to tell you now. There is some hidden advantages of MIMA, uh, which still makes a 4x4 MIMO system work very well, even if it only gives you twice the data rate.